Hello everyone, and thank you for inviting us to today's meeting. Our speaker for this meeting is Dr. Julia Duranti, who is here to talk about the human papillomavirus, the HPV vaccine, and the importance of getting children vaccinated against the virus as a preventative measure against infection and possible future cancer development. Dr. Duranti completed her pediatrics residency at Lehigh Valley Children's Hospital in Allentown, Pennsylvania. She is currently a third year fellow in the Adolescent Medicine Fellowship, a new program that Dr. Duranti pioneered as the very first fellow at UT Southwestern Medical Center and Children's Health. Her research interests include understanding parent and adolescent communication about sexual and reproductive health. Dr. Duranti sees patients with a wide range of health conditions at the Adolescent and Young Adult Medicine Clinic at Children's Medical Center in Dallas. With that, here is Dr. Duranti. Thanks so much for having me today, and I'm so excited to speak with you guys about this important topic. So HPV as a pediatrician is very important for me to counsel on. I'm really glad to be able to talk with you. It's, imp it's important to know that human papillomavirus, HPV, is actually the most common sexually transmitted infection. Most people don't even know that they're infected. About 79 million Americans are currently affected and 14 million new infections happen each year. Most of the infected people are infected as teenagers or as young adults. Almost everyone who becomes sexually active will be infected with HPV at some point. And because there's no symptoms for most, they never know they're infected. You don't even necessarily need to have sexual intercourse to become infected with human papillomavirus. It can occur with any skin-to-skin -skin contact with infected skin, as well as any type of body fluid exchange that's intimate. The virus can be spread between individuals and neither of them could know that they're infected, and it's usually not screened for. There's many different types of HPV. There's actually over 100. Most types of HPV do not cause any problems. Some of them cause warts in the genital region or in other areas of the body. These can last a long time, but most of them do go away for most people. For others, they may last longer, but they might not necessarily cause problems. Even the dangerous types of HPV often clear up. But in some cases, the types of HPV that cause cancer start to cause changes to the cells, which can lead to cancer. This slide depicts the way that the virus causes cancer in the cells. So on the left, you see the uterus and the cervix, which is the main location for the most deadly form of uh, cancer caused by HPV, cervical cancer. These purple images show a cross section of the way normal cells look like on the left and how they change. Basically, when I think of the way cancer works, I think of cells that are following signals like cars follow traffic lights. When cells are behaving normally, like the cells on the left, they are obeying all the rules. They are going when the body says go and they're stopping when the body says stop. So all these cells on the left look the same, look normal. When the virus starts causing changes in the cells or mutations, changes in their DNA, that starts changing the behavior of the cells. They start not behaving all the body's signals anymore. They start not stopping at traffic lights. They start running red lights. They start growing when they're not supposed to grow. Those are these cells in the middle here. And they're starting to look a little different. When you get a pap smear to screen for cervical cancer, this is what the doctor looks like. They look for signs of cells that are starting to look abnormal. And that's how they know that your body is starting to develop a precancerous uh, growth. As these cells continue to get more and more changes in mutations, these cells become more and more dangerous to the body. You see that the body can sometimes reverse these precancerous growths, but as there become more and more changes to these cells, it gets harder and harder for the body to fix it on their own. When the cells advance to cancer, those are cells that have had so many changes and so many mutations that the body's immune system can no longer stop them from growing on their own. At this point, we call it a cancer. This is a cervical cancer. And this is the time where most people will start seeing uh, doctors to figure out what kind of treatment is best for them. Many people need a surgery or different medicines. Some people use chemotherapy or radiation to try to stop the growth of the cancerous cells. So this is 
kind of a, a in a nutshell the way the virus makes those changes to the cells okay this is a chart that shows all the different cases of different of different hpv cancers because it's not just cervical cancer up top we have the cancers that occur in females and then at the bottom we have the cancers that are caused in males now as you can see I, the most important thing i want you to know is that each of these cases in blue these cases are preventable with the HPV vaccine. So all these cervical cases, all these rectal and anal cancers, these vulvar cancers, and then most of these uh, oropharynx cancers, which means cancers in the throat or the tongues, the cheeks, cancers in the upper, uh, in that area. All of these are preventable with the HPV vaccine. These are caused by specific types of HPV that we know cause cancer. Um, the first, these these big blue graph was uh, were the ones preventable by the first generation HPV vaccine. But now all of these blue cases are covered by the current uh, HPV vaccine. So when you look at all the cases of cancer that happen each year, most of them could be prevented if everyone were to get the HPV vaccine before they encountered those strains of the HPV virus. However, not everyone is getting the vaccine and they're not always getting it before they become sexually active. This chart on top, this yellow line shows us the rates of HPV related cancers and people who have not gotten the vaccine at all. You can see that's the highest rate of all. This blue line shows the rate of cancer and people who were vaccinated, but they weren't vaccinated until late teenage years or young adulthood. The average person has become sexually active by the time they reach adulthood. So while it can still be useful to vaccinate someone who is near the age of sexual activity or has already become sexually active, they are not as protected from cancer as this green line. This green line shows people who are vaccinated before the age of 17, when most people have not yet become sexually active. Or if they have, they might not have encountered most strains of HPV yet. So you can see people vaccinated as teenagers before they become sexually active have the best protection against cervical cancer of any of these groups. This becomes important because the dosing changes depending on which age you start getting your kids vaccinated. So one thing that's really attractive when I talk with kids and parents is that if you start vaccination earlier, you actually need fewer doses of the vaccine to be fully protected. If you start the vaccine series before the age of 15, your child only needs two doses of the vaccine to become fully protected from the HPV virus. You can get the vaccine starting at age nine, but this is true up until age 15, you will only need two doses. You do need three doses if you start after the age of 15. You might also need three doses if your child is immune compromised for other reasons, such as having an illness or a cancer that gives their immune uh, system needs an extra boost to get that protection. And this uh, vaccine can be re received up to the age of 26. So even if you have a young adult, uh, you can still get this vaccine to get you protection, especially against all the other strains of that that are vaccine preventable because HPV is caught, has more than 100 subtypes and there's multiple ones that cause different cancers. However, as you might know, the HPV vaccination rate is much lower than the vaccination rate for most mandatory vaccines. Up top in this green bracket, you can see that most teenage vaccines like Tdap or meningitis have over 90% of kids getting the vaccine. But HPV nationwide is stuck down here. Only about half of teens get the HPV vaccine. In Texas, you might remember there was a lot of controversy when the first came out about whether it should be mandatory. And Texas now has the fifth lowest rate in the entire country. Only a third of Texas teens get adequately protected against the HPV vaccine. Now, this happens for a number of reasons. And I think some of the main ones are we're afraid because HPV is a sexually transmitted disease. So sometimes pediatricians are afraid of talking about it with the parents. Sometimes parents are afraid of talking about it with the kids because one thing parents don't wanna do is they don't wanna give their kids the wrong idea that by vaccinating against a sexually transmitted disease, you could unintentionally encourage sex. But sometimes something I reassure all my patients as a doctor is, Getting this vaccine does not encourage sexual activity. 
This is a vaccine that is most effective if you give it early in the teenage years before there's any risk of sexual activity. And we know the earlier you get it, the better protection against cervical cancer you have. So I introduced this to my patients as this is a vaccine against cancer. And this is not a vaccine that's gonna change any behavior, that's gonna encourage any behavior in your children. So this is something I wish more doctors were less afraid about, because currently it's not something that all doctors talk to about, especially for teenage boys, because when the vaccine first came out, it was marketed primarily towards teenage girls. We weren't yet recommending it for all teenage boys, but now the data is out that it prevents cancers in all sexes. So... I think it's important for every child, girl and boy, to get this vaccine. And even if they didn't get it as a teenager, it's still important to get it as an adult. What you can you do to protect your children against HPV or yourself? I would start by asking their doctors about HPV. You can ask this at their annual well child check, even if your child is not yet old enough to get the vaccine, or if your child is past the regular age bracket, you can still ask, did my child get this vaccine? This goes for males and for females. If you're not sure if your child got the vaccine, you can check your vaccine records or ask your doctor. You can ask them because even if you missed it when they were a younger teen, it's still important to get it when they're an older teen or a young adult. And it's important, even if your kids are in high school, if they're in college already, I still recommend young adults to get this vaccine if they didn't get it before. There's many types of HPV that cause cancer and getting this vaccine will prevent uh, you from being at risk from the types of HPV you've not encountered yet. So it is my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys might have as a group. Uh, um, 